Hello everyone and welcome to another webinar from us expert series. My name is Mohammed Al Amin, an application engineer with Altair. Today we'll be talking about inductance computation using uh, using flux. So here's the topic that I will be cover through this webinar. So first I will uh, look at different inductance definition and then we will see how we can use those different definition to define different computational methods that we can use in flux to compute the inductance in general after that i will do a, a, a first demo using a simple inductor example just to see how we can use some of those methods inside flux uh, moving on i will take a, a very specific case, which I'm sure a lot of you might be interested in, which is uh, about the uh, winding inductance computation for uh, electric motors, right? So we talk about the phase inductance, how it can be computed in flux. Then I will go and talk about the, D the DQ principle and talk about how we can compute the DQ inductance in flux. I will finish with the demo for uh, those uh, two different methods, right? Phase inductance and DQ inductance for an IPM motor. So what is the what is the inductance? So the inductance is electrical parameter which defines the characteristic of a coil or conductor in general and it's measured in Henry. So the most common definition of the inductance is that define how much energy the coil can store as a magnetic field created by the current flow. And it's expressed by this equation here where W is the energy, L is the inductance, I is the current, right? So what you can see here for the same current, the uh, uh, higher inductance means you can store more magnetic energy into uh, into the uh, into the coil, right? So that's uh, one definition, and the other definition is that define the opposition of the chain to the current due to the induced back EMF in the coil. What that means, if you apply step voltage to your coil, you will see the current will not follow that voltage immediately. There will be some transient with specific time constant, right? So you can think of the inductance as the electrical inertia of the system, right? So the more inductance that the coil has, the more uh, time it will, take the, uh, it will take the current to reach steady state. Uh, it's also a very common definition. It's that's defined the relationship between the magnetic flux linkage and the current flowing in the coil, which typically, if you look at this plot here, is expressed as uh, uh, with with, uh, with the red line here, right? So at the beginning, the relation with the flux linkage and the current is mostly linear, right? Because we didn't reach the saturation. Uh, yet, once we push enough current, you will see that the flux linkage is saturated in the in the coil, right? So from this curve, we can define two types of inductance. The first one is called apparent inductance, sometimes called linear inductance or static inductance, which basically at any point of this curve, we just divide the flux linkage over the current. And the other inductance is uh, what's called incremental inductance, uh, local inductance, and sometimes dynamic inductance is the derivative of the flux linkage over the current. Uh, from uh, uh, also uh, for simple type of, uh, of coil with a simple magnetic circuit, you can possibly compute the inductance analytically uh, using this relationship here by knowing that the inductance is a proportion to the square of the number of turns in the coil and it's inversely proportional to the reluctance of the magnetic circuit. So if you have a simple enough magnetic circuit, you can possibly compute the reluctance of it by hand. And uh, why the computation of the inductance is important? Because it helps us, right, modeling the device in hand and uh, have an equivalent circuit model of that device, right? Whether the device is an inductor, uh, electric uh, electric machine, transformer, reactors, and so on. Besides that, we can also generate like a reduced order model, especially this is especially important for electric machines, right? Because most of the uh, electric motors operate in, in, in saturation. So inductance vary uh, too much depending on the current you are pushing on the circuit. Okay, so based on uh, those uh, different definitions that we 
uh, that, that I show in the previous slide, we can compute the inductance by uh, different uh, method inside uh, inside flux, right? So the first uh, the first and third one, uh, we can use the flux linkage. So we can model the problem in flux, compute the flux linkage, and from there we can compute the linear inductance by just dividing the flux linkage over the current, or compute the local inductance by taking the derivative of the flux linkage over the current. We can also use the uh, energy definition to compute the energy in the domain, and then from there we can compute the inductance of that coil. For all of those here, we can use the static computation. Uh, the fourth method is more related to the electrical inertia concept I explained. So in, uh, in flux, you can use a transient computation. You can apply step voltage and then look how much the current is going to take to reach around 63% of its steady state value. That's what's called the time constant. And knowing the resistance of the coil, then you can compute the inductance. Uh, the last method is using steady state AC magnetic. So in this case, we push uh, uh, a voltage, which will be a sinusoidal voltage, typically expressed as a complex value, right? And then we can compute the current. In steady state, both the voltage and the current are complex value. And then I can use this equation here, knowing omega, which is the frequency used for the application, I can compute the inductance using, uh, using this equation here. So knowing all of this, I will uh, do a demo here using a simple uh, inductor example. So it's an inductor with a pot car. We have the coil in the middle here. And this, uh, for the specific problem, it can be modeled in 2D as axisymmetric uh, geometry. And this is just some of the information and the dimension about, uh, about this uh, coil. So we are using 1010 steel, and we are using a coil with 60 turn created from a copper wire. So I have the solve uh, flux project here. As you can see the magnetostatic problem. So I will use this to demonstrate the first three method of the inductance computation. And uh, this uh, problem is solved for a different value of the current in the coil, right from zero to 50 amp. Uh, so the first uh, method is to compute the linear inductance. So for that, I need to compute the flux linkage, right? So I will create a curve, basically because I want to plot the inductance against different current level. New 2D curve, and I will call this linear inductance. And to access the flux linkage, you go to the circuit, click source, click flux, add. So this is the equation which defines the flux linkage. And then I will go to the formula editor here just to divide this by the current, right? And that should give me the linear inductance. So I click OK. Now it's coming through the different values of current and computing the inductance. And here I have the plot for the linear inductance. Uh, following the same process, I create a new 2D curve. This time we'll compute the inductance from the energy. So to access the energy, you need to go to region, select the domain, select energy, click OK, then go to the formula editor. So we see that the inductance is equal to multiplied by the energy divided by the current square. And here the curve related to the inductance computed from the energy. Uh, the third method is to compute the local inductance. And to compute that, I need to first plot the flux linkage and then do the derivative of the flux linkage. So I named this local inductance. And uh, for the, I need to do this in two steps. So the first steps, I need to plot the flux linkage. Okay. 
So we can actually see the effect of the saturation, right? At the beginning, there's not so much there's not much saturation in the core, and I have a linear relationship between the flux linkage and the current. Once I push high enough current, it starts to get into the saturation. So I can take the derivative of this uh, of this curve from here, curve, 2D curve, IO parameter, derivative of a 2D curve, and I select the curve that I want to uh, uh, I want to do the derivative too, which is, it's, I name it local inductance. And I click OK. And then you can see here, this is the derivative of the flux linkage over the current. Now to, co to compare all this method together, I can uh, put all this curve in the same plot by going to curve, 2D curve, superimpose 2D curve. And I select uh, and select all the curve and I click OK. Uh, before putting them together, uh, because uh, I have the flux linkage plot as well, so I can come to quantities and just and check the, sorry, this one here, which is the flux linkage. Then I can put them together by putting the curve in absolute, so it will put them together. So what we can see here, that if I look at the uh, 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 unsaturated uh, region, that the inductance value is around 840 microhenry or 0.84 millihenry, right? And we can see if we zoom in here, that they, they all, all the measured results on almost the same inductance when there's no saturation or when there's very small current. When we move into saturation, really the, the way you compute the inductance is going to make a difference. Uh, the first one, which is like the linear inductance, which is in purple here and the one in uh, in yellow, those are, are uh, by definition, they are different methods, different inductance, right? But we can still see a difference between the inductance computed from the energy and the inductance computed from the flux linkage. So this is something you need to be careful about. Just when it says saturation, the method used to compute the inductance can make a difference. So let's move to the second part, which is about uh, computing the inductance for electric machine, which I just referred to as winding inductance computation. So for uh, the electric machine is a special case because uh, the AC electric motors are multi-phase machine, mostly um, uh, three phase with 120 spatial shift between the different phases. And why is that special? Because it will define a new phenomena here, right? So, uh, uh, because there are three different coil or phases, when you push a current through the coil, there will be a self inductance in the coil itself. But because the flux from this coil can be linked to the adjacent coil, we also have what's called mutual inductance, which we refer to by M. So this uh, defined for us a, a three set of equations, which are represented by these matrices here. And it's uh, then we have to actually compute nine different inductances between self and mutual inductances between the different coils. Fortunately, Flux can do this by using the computation of inductance matrices function, which is available in the post-processing of any soft transient magnetic application. And this function compute both the self and mutual inductance and give you all the value here to uh, represent this uh, matrix. So how this, uh, how this function works? First, it will freeze the permeability of the magnetic circuit, which mainly is a rotor and stator, and then it will push a current in one of the coils, zero to the others, and then compute uh, three quantities, right? The self-inductance and the mutual to the other uh, coils, and then it will mo uh, 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 force a current in the second coil and zero to the others, and so on, until it goes through all the, all the coils. Okay, so most often in electric machine, it's easier to deal with it when it's uh, in what's called the DQ reference frame. So what's the principle of the DQ uh, reference frame? Is that typically we have uh, three phase quantities that we are dealing with, right? And those quantities are sinusoidally changing with time. So it's not very easy to deal with them. 
So the idea is instead of dealing with is all the quantity like the voltage, the flux linkage, the current, the inductance in a three uh, phase reference frame, it's easier to deal with it with uh, two two phase uh, 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 rotor fixed reference frame. What I mean by rotor fix, that means it's rotating with the same synchronous speed as the rotor. And hence, if you project the three phase quantity into this new reference frame, you will see the quantity are mostly DC, which are constant. And then it's easier to deal with them for the modeling and for the control purpose and so on. Uh, so most of the time, we will try to use the DQ reference frame instead of the ABC because it's easier to deal with. So in Flux, we can also handle this. We have a, a macro. So a macro is nothing but a dedicated script uh, written in Python, which you can call and run from inside Flux. So we have a macro that's called Create Lookup Table from TM Project DQ Lite. So this macro, uh, you just define the inputs here, which I will show through the demo. But mainly, you need to define uh, main parameters of the motor and the variation of the current that you want. Then this will run and will create lookup table uh, for the DQ flux, DQ inductances, and the torque. Again, it's different value of current, ID, IQ, and different rotor position as well. Uh, furthermore, you can actually take these tables and uh, use them as a reduced order model in the system simulation. And uh, the script also generate the macro also generate OML script, which you can run in Compose to have very nice maps of those different quantities. So uh, how this macro works? So the first thing the macro will do is to determine the rotor angle, which align the d-axis of the new reference frame with the phase A MMF of the stator reference frame, right? And this is very important for the uh, bark transformation to have the right, you know, transformation back and forth between the ABC and the DQ reference frame. After that, it will create a magnetostatic uh, uh, project from the transient one. It will create two pilot parameters, ID, IQ, to control the excitation, and then uh, uh, those IDIQ will be converted to ABC uh, current that will push in the model to define the excitation because in the model we 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 use like a, 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 we we model the three coils together. Okay, then we run the parametric computation for different value for, of ID, IQ, and rotor position, and then we compute the flux linkage in ABC, and then we convert it to DQ flux using again. Bark transformation. Uh, once we compute the DQ flux, it's then easy to compute the inductance using the definition that I showed at the beginning, right? So we can compute the static dynamic inductances, right, for uh, LQ by dividing YQ over IQ, uh, and uh, also for uh, for YD by first uh, for YD because this is the same axis as the magnet flux linkage. I need to subtract that first and then divide by ID. Right. Uh, this is for the static inductance. For the dynamic inductance, because it's it's the derivative, I just need to take it. It's it's the same process for both D and Q. Right. You just take the derivative of the flux over the over the cap. And uh, furthermore, you can also use this uh, say, uh, bark equations to compute the torque here if you know the flux linkage in D and Q and the current. So I will demonstrate this capability through uh, a demo. So the demo is for an IBM motor, it's 48 slot 8 volts. Uh, it has around 88 kilowatt of power, and this are some information about the machine. So uh, for the winding, it's a three-phase single-layer winding with a coil pitch of five, and uh, uh, number of coil per pole per phase is one. It has six turn per coil with two parallel paths. So let me open the model here. So the first thing we are going to do is the phase inductance computation. So I have the solve model here. So we are modeling only one pole of the machine, and then we are uh, because we are utilizing the periodicity. And uh, this model is solved. So it's actually solved for half electric cycle from 45 degree to 90 degree. 
Okay, so once you have a, a salt transient magnetic project to compute the phase inductance, you can go to the computation menu and click here, computation of inductance matrix. And then there's uh, uh, some options here. You can compute the apparent inductance, incremental inductance, or both of them. For this demo, I'll just do the apparent inductance. And here it's asks you to select the source coil. So I will select all the coils. I have three coils here representing the three phases. And for those, it will compute the self-inductance, right? So if you want to compute the mutual inductance between the different coil, you need to include them here as target coils, right? So you select all, and then it will compute the mutual inductance for the different uh, uh, combinations. And it also asks you to, because it will save the results in IO parameters, you can provide the prefix, right, in case maybe you need to run this function more than one time. So uh, after you do this, you just click OK, and the tool will run the computation in the background. Actually, in the output here, you see this message that says the computation of the inductance matrices has started. Once the computation is done, the result will be saved under parameter quantity. And you can see here, those are the different uh, inductance that are computed, including the self and the mutual inductance. So furthermore, we can use those parameters to plot the inductance against different uh, rotor position. So I can go to curve, create a new 2D curve. I can call this, for example, self-inductance. From 45 to 90, so this is half electric cycle. I go to the formula editor, and then I have access to all the parameters here. So this is the first parameter, right? 1, 1 means it's the self-inductance. I can copy and paste this and just change the name. Then click OK. And this gives me the curve for the uh, for the self-inductance, so I can put them together, absolute. So what you can see here is the typical case. You have an average value of the inductance, and you also have typically a high second harmonic as well. We can also repeat the same for the case of the mutual inductance. We can take this one between the mutual inductance between the first coil and the second coil, and also between the first coil and the third coil, and then click OK, and put the curve together. And those, uh, this is a mutual inductance. And you can notice that for the mutual inductance, the value are negatives. So next, I will move to another project, so the same project. Uh, same motor, uh, it's a transit magnetic problem. This time, this is an unsolved project, and we'll use this project to compute the DQ inductances. So, the as I, as I mentioned, to compute the DQ inductances, we use a macro. So, to load a macro in flux, you need to go to the extension menu, macro, and load. So, the macro we're going to use here is called create lookup table. TM project DQ light. Once you load this macro, it should show up here in the data tree under extension macros. And to run the macro, you just need to right click on the name and click run. Each macro has specific inputs. So for this macro, first we need to decide the current sources representing the state of supply. So I have three here I1, I2, and I3. Then we need to decide on the mobile mechanical set. In this model is called rotor, the stator mechanical set. In this model is called stator. And then we need to decide the maximum value for ID for the analysis. And this will be same for IQ, right? And then the analysis will go from minus this value to uh, plus this value, okay? So here I will put 400. Then you need to this in this range what is the total number of uh, of values for the computation. So the more he uh, the higher value you put here, it will have a more accurate computation. 
right? To have more accuracy on the map that you will get, but it will take more time to solve. So I can put 11 here. Then I need to put the number of poles of the motor. So I have eight poles. And what is the pool pairs you are represented in the geometry? So I am only representing one pole. So the value should be 0.5. And the number of stator periodicities should be four. Then you decide here the number of computation you want to uh, provide for the for the different uh, rotor position. So typically here we just need to define this for one third of the electric period because this macro we just created for uh, create for one third and it just replicate for the for the other to reduce the computation time. So uh, here I'm going to uh, put uh, 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 31 because I have because the total electric period is 90, so by putting uh, 31, that means I will compute the inductance for each uh, uh, one degree position. And then you click OK, and uh, and uh, the macro will start running. Once the macro is done, you will see the magnetostatic application or project used for the computation. And you will notice here this project is solved for different value for ID, on a Q, and rotor position. If we check the, uh, the scenario used for the solving, you can see the variation of the parameters here. And you also see one thing here, which is called parametric distribution. So Flux has its own distribution engine, and you need uh, to make sure this is set uh, correctly beforehand. And the macro will try to use this parametric distribution. That means it will distribute the computation among the different cores that you have in your machine instead of running them sequentially one by one. And this will save a lot of time for the computation. Uh, you can already use this project to do some post-processing. For example, I can plot a 3D curve for the DQ flux linkage. I will put in X axis, I put ID. And uh, in Y axis, I built IQ, and I just do this for one rotor position. And then I need to access the parameter to define the flux. So I can go here, go to physical. And here I, you can find flux D and flux Q. So here's the 3D curve, as you can see. And this is uh, flux, uh, the axis flux linkage. And you can see the variation against ID and IQ. Uh, you can also look at it from the top. So you'll see this nice map for the uh, D axis flux linkage. And you can change it from here to the Q axis flux linkage, right? You can also see the effect of the cross coupling between the D and Q axis in the middle here. Beside this, in the same directory where you have the project, you will find uh, this information. First, you will find this project here. So this is a project used by the macro to find the initial rotor position. Uh, you can also find uh, uh, this uh, .mat file. So this is, uh, include information of all the matrices for the flux linkage, the inductance, and the torque. This matrix is created by this OML script. And uh, indeed, you can use the same OML script to, uh, uh, to, to blot the different maps. All you need to do is to comment the part, this part here, and comment the, uh, the graphs that you want to, to, to blot. Sorry, I mean I meant like uncomment. Those are commented on the script, but you can uncomment them to blot the different maps. Well, once you do that, you can run the script, and it should create the create the different map with a with a nice view. Okay. So we can see here we we have the map for the flux, D and Q. We have the map for the static inductances. We also have the map for the for the torque and also the map for the dynamic inductances for LD and LQ. Okay, that's all what I wanted to cover in my uh, demo and in this webinar. Thank you for attending and I will be happy to answer any question that you have.